Hey, welcome back, ladies and gents. It's been a uh, a long, hot, busy summer. Um, I didn't feel like I had the time to continue creating content, and it's not at the top of my priority list through the summer. But I uh, figured I'd bring you guys in today on what we're doing. We've got a system replacement we're doing, so we're loading up, unloading some stuff off the trailer from earlier this week and then we're loading up a five ton Bryant Evolution uh, five stage 18 sear I think the five tons like 17 and a half but it's their 18 sear technology to go out and do a replacement so we're gonna finish loading this up and then uh, I'm gonna do a video on replacing the condenser and then a separate video on something I've been wanting to do is how you check the charge on these uh, Bryant Evolution style systems. I think Carrier calls it Infinity and then all of the other uh, 18 C or and above brands uh, use an ion thermostat. So we'll go over that, but we're gonna finish loading up now. All right, ladies and gents, we're out here on the job site, finally. Um, give you guys a kind of a look at what we've got here. This is a, uh, it's a one-story house, but it has a finished basement. So we've got the, this is a unit that services the master bedroom area. This is the basement. And then this is the five-ton main system that we're swapping out. Not a big fan of how the installing contractor did this work. I mean, just took some extra bricks, set the unit on. Um, and you got this, I mean, it works, but to me it just looks crappy. Um, so, and all the disconnects are mounted on the sides of the unit. So we're gonna take, we've got a new wheel, new disconnect. We've got our three inch heat pump risers a uh, corrosion grenade all you Karens can save me your comments about you know why any of this stuff is necessary this is how we choose to do business uh, we're trying to have our customers experience zero downtime so anything we can do or provide that they agree that they want um, we do that so and we've also got surge protector for the outdoor disconnect um, everything that we need out here torches vacuum pump nitrogen for brazing cool gel um, again all you Karens you wet rag guys and the thermo putty hey whatever you use is fine that's just what I use I use cool gel I used to use cool rags or wet rags for years um, but I like that it's quick and easy to use brought my copper cutter um, it doesn't cut 3 8 but it'll cut everything bigger than that. I've got my field piece gauges. Had to get a new voltmeter yesterday because I lost one. Got my water over there and my tool bag. And this, uh, this unit was uh, already pretty low. So I pumped it down. I got started while I was setting everything up pumped it down and then uh, apparently the gauges need to be zeroed out so anyway I'm gonna go through disconnecting everything and getting this ready to get out of here and put the new one in so I've already made sure that the voltage is off with my voltmeter and you know you can unscrew these connections if you want to I like to make a clean connection with the new unit so I'm going to cut these. And with the ground, it really doesn't matter. But uh, I'm going to cut it anyway so I don't have to get a screwdriver out. Okay, and that's everything in here that needs to be disconnected. Now, we've got the low voltage wires here. Again, 
I don't like using the old connections, so I'm just going to cut this thermostat wire. There's more than enough. And then we're going to pull this disconnect off. Actually, I'm probably just going to cut this right here because we don't need this old disconnect. All right, we like to use these risers to set the uh, outdoor unit on so the bottom of the unit doesn't get full of crap. It's got the holes in the bottom of the unit for the water to drain out of that gets inside of this. And when you set it on the ground, especially on a pad that's you know just in the backyard with grass all around it, all the grass clippings bunch up around the bottom of the unit. And then, you know, the way they installed these drains, the equipment's been draining onto the pad and then dirt has accumulated over the years. And uh, next time we're out here for a maintenance, which this is a new customer, we're, we'll clean this entire concrete pad on, off. But that's not on our agenda today. So we're not gonna be doing that. And you've got on these risers, little peel off stickers. Sometimes they'll be missing one. Usually it's stuck to the one that it was stacked on. You can take that off, but get a glove on here. I'll just do a corner at the time when I'm by myself. And this, uh, this concrete pad was pretty busted up, but that gives you an idea of what we're trying to accomplish with these risers. Just gets it up off of whatever the unit should be sitting on. All right, I'm gonna work on mounting the disconnect now. Um, all right, so we got the unit sitting right here. I'm sitting on a bucket and you got the power for this unit that needs to run to the disconnect it's coming out right here um, I'm gonna get this crap out of the way so.
And this is just a 60 amp non-fuse disconnect. And I'm gonna put it right here. Maybe over this way a little bit. That way I can run this conduit right up into it. Okay. Drill marks done. And I like to use the tap gun, screws, you know, whatever you use, just follow the instructions. And I've used a hammer drill for years, but I picked up these uh, masonry bits last week, used them for a project at home and decided that I like them. So, um, the tap con size that we're using calls for a 3 16ths inch hole. So that's what I've got here. And usually the hammer drill tends to crack and make a slightly larger hole than what's needed. So, Woo! It's a little warm. Hey, and we've got an Apache flying overhead. Just happen to have a three quarter inch liquid tight fitting in my little bucket here. And I like to use my PVC cutters for liquid tight. Just want to make sure you don't cut through the outside jacket of that wire. certainly don't need that much wire but you always want to cut it to the length of what's going to be the longest so we're going over here to the make sure you can see this so I'm going to come in this far side over here so right in that area Right. All right, and then this thing was put together like that. So these are gonna go on in that order. We'll move the yellow right there to the edge of the conduit. And then this piece screws in. up the yellow part and this comes over and you can see there's a little hex shape in there you can use this piece to screw it in but I always just put it in with the channel locks it's a lot easier that way and using a uh, adjustable wrench or channel locks on this sometimes will gum it up I'd rather gum up the part you can't see And 
if you want to get this tighter than hand tight, by all means go for it. And then I always use the lock ring to figure out which piece I need to bump out. So there's three rings in here, kind of like the way this one looks. We're taking out the middle and the next one. You got to leave the third one intact. So this is how I do it. You can do it however you want to. I use a flat head with a shank so you can hit it on the end. And you can also do this before you put it in or install the disconnect on the wall. Completely up to you. You do it however you want. I'm actually going to come under the lines here. It's off camera, but I'll show you later. see that there was a lot of water in that old whip the way it was sitting it was just sitting in the unit so any of the water that was getting into that equipment was also getting into the uh, wire all right this is our uh, three-quarter inch whip uh, I like to put this end in the unit these come with a 90 degree and a straight on. So we're going to come in this side with this. All right, and then I want this conduit to go straight down. So you got to take the curl out of it a little bit. tighten this down and this is a plastic ring so you got to be a little more delicate with it so you want to make sure you're not driving into the ring that you're just driving on the little tooth there that way if you do damage it it just knocks that tooth off and once you start knocking those off that's about as tight as you're going to get it But ideally, you just want it tight enough where there's a uh, little gasket on this other side here. You see that little rubber, black rubber there? That needs to be pressed up against the side of the disconnect to keep water from getting inside. All right, so we got all this in here. Now we need to do our surge protector. Whatever surge protector you're using, make sure you follow the instructions. Um, I just like this because it's pretty simple. It's not huge. I can put it in anything. A lot of times on the indoor units, uh, when there's a breaker in the uh, equipment, we'll wire it into that. But this is going to go on the line side of this. So your line is your power coming into the disconnect and your load is the power coming out of it going to your equipment. So... We're going to mount this over here and it's going to use the smallest hole 
So we're going to knock that out. You can kind of hold that lock ring in place. And I like to leave the data label facing out on that. So if by chance someone else works on this way on down the line besides us, they know what it is and they can read it because a lot of people aren't familiar with that. And then I assume that, you know, most of the people watching these videos know pretty much basic electrical stuff. But for those of you that don't, uh, this is going to be a 220 volt or 240 volt, whatever, 230, whatever you want to call it. It's all the same, really single phase. So we've got our ground wire. This is the line coming in from the breaker inside. The color doesn't matter. Both of these wires are going to be 110 to 120 volts to ground. And then together, if you check them with a voltmeter, they're going to read 220 to 240. Okay. So all the grounds are going to go on this lug. Our line wires are going to go in the line. And then our load wire is going to go there. We're wiring in the surge protector with the line wires, which is why we have a green ground and two blacks. So color does not matter for this application. We do want these wires to be as short as possible. That's per the instructions. All right, so I'm gonna do the grounds first. So we can route all these other wires over it. to just go ahead and loosen up all these screws, lugs, whatever you want to call it. All right, grounds are done. So as far as stripping wire for, uh, you know, power connections, whether it's high voltage or low voltage, you want to have just enough wire exposed to go into the fitting or the connection that you're making. So, you know, we're talking the length of, a, you know, a fingernail maybe at the most. You don't want to strip it way down here and have all this wire exposed outside of the lug because the possibility for it to arc and ground out inside of this panel or to arc to another wire close to it that you've stripped too far, that, that increases that risk, the risk for a fire, um, and it, it's problems. So you trip a breaker, you're getting an unnecessary call out here for a uh, poor installation practice on your wiring. So this is the line wire. So we're going in the far terminals along with these that need to be cut as short as possible. So we're going to do the far left first. I think these are 12 gauge. Yep. And then I like to twist braided wire. Make sure that it's gonna go in there. And then you wanna give these wires a tug. Make sure that they're in there, which the surge protector wire was not. All right, now it's in there. And I'm just going to work from the left over. So now we're going to do a load wire. And then with these thicker gauge wires, you know, I don't have a stripper or a hole for that gauge wire. So I just take and get it where it cuts through the insulation and work it around. This will work with lime and pliers too. I would practice if you've never done that with some uh, scrap wire before you try and do it on a job and cut through the wire. That can cause a problem where you have to pull a new wire because it's not long enough to uh, cut off the damaged end and start over. So. All right, that's in there, okay. Next wire is a load wire. All 
Don't well, disconnect. Put this back on. Oh, I forgot to mention this piece was tucked in. You gotta fold it out. And then we'll put this in in the off position for now. do this copper now. I like to work from the ground up on condensers. That way you're not brazing with all the electrical wire up above you. First off we're gonna remove these Schrader valves. to do this so I know they're not getting too hot and then I keep them in the valve caps and set them somewhere where I know they're not going to get knocked over and I'll tear this old insulation back sure that your shavings don't fall down in the copper. We don't want those shavings rolling around getting into the compressor or the expansion valve, that sort of thing. And then not bending this pipe enough to require a bender but if you're not comfortable with that I would suggest you get one and use it. And we're going to move this unit a little bit and then move it back into place. going to do my filter dryer inside. Um, part of this we'll cover when we do an air handler is I like to do the line set flush. We can't replace these lines because they're in between the floor of the basement and the ceiling, or excuse me, the floor of the first floor and the basement ceiling. So homeowner's not wanting to tear all the sheetrock out or the flooring up. So we can replace this line set. So we're using an OEM approved line set flush. We flush it from the inside out. And you're supposed to, according to the directions on the one we use, you're supposed to have a, a restricted opening for it to come out of to kind of increase the pressure in the line. So we take the Schrader valves out. We do the line set flush. And then we put the filter dryer on the inside. That way we're not having to cut the copper outside again. And really that's where it should be anyway, and it should be in a vertical uh, position. So um, that way it's not holding oil. And I want to say that most of the manufacturers 
suggest or they did at one time that the filter dryers are put as close to the internal TXV as possible but not saying that we always do that but we try to so I'll make this other connection now out and the reason you ream is because when you use your copper cutters it puts a uh, what the industry refers to as a barb on the inside of the tubing and that restricts the flow of refrigerant a little bit so you want to take that reamer and basically cut that little barb off the inside of the tubing away and then we're going to set up our gauges to do a nitrogen flow while we're brazing Put our cool gel back here to protect the valve. Same thing on the high side. Doesn't take a lot. And then this is my nitrogen setup. I bought this little, uh, I forget who makes it. I think it's a Diversitec product but you can go ahead and turn your nitrogen on and i set the psi at about 150 and you got a purge setting which you can see right here and a braze and that's probably a little much for brazing so you just want a little bit of flow going through there i don't know if you can hear that and then there is an offsetting And I'm going to hook my charging hose up to that. Go ahead and get that ready to turn on. Open up my gauges. My ball valves are open on my high and low side. And then we've got torches right here. in acetylene and yep I use stay still five and with brazing I hear a lot of people call it soldering so with solder you're getting the actual material that you're using to join two pieces together hot and melting it across those points with brazing you're getting the material that you're trying to join hot enough to melt the material that you're using to connect it so we are brazing let's get this camera over here you guys can see So I like to start from the bottom, get the heat going down here, enough to melt the solder on the top and then kind of work your way around. We'll start with the low side.
get a little inspection mirror. I like to check all the way around on the bottom. Make sure I don't have any holes. You can kind of see there's not any holes on the bottom there. Kind of hard to get an angle with this GoPro. But, uh, now we're done with the brazing on the outside anyway. And we'll leave the nitrogen hooked up for when we do the inside. I just need to turn my purge valve off. So we're not flowing or nitrogen while we're brazing or before we braze the inside. So I'm gonna go ahead and make the electrical connections now for this outdoor unit. My helper's still working on the inside, getting it out. All right. And again, this is a five stage, uh, five ton. 18 sear technology i think the five tons is 17 or 17 and a half sear uh, with that technology and we're going to do the high voltage first route this wire conduit so we're going to cut it right there PVC cutters again. Remember, be careful not to cut into your wire. So we're just going thick enough to cut through the outside of that conduit. We're gonna take this fitting off the end should just twist off but it's not nope it is out you got it out out of the closet? Yeah, it's next to the um Nice. It's next to the trailer. Alright, we'll start putting the get the other air handler ready, take put the heat strips in it and uh take the coil out and the blower just be very gentle because we can't damage that. All right, finally got it off. on there and I would not suggest just cutting this I like to make a loop so there's a little bit of extra in here in case on down the road this unit gets replaced that these wires not be have any pressure on them pushing up against anything like the other lugs so these are kind of free sitting the panel's not going to push up against them now we just need to run this ground voltage is done again you want to make sure you pull on all your connections make sure they're tight and then 
this is a communicating system. So we're only going to use a total of four wires anywhere for the low voltage. The outdoor unit only requires two. Okay. And the terminal designations for that, I believe, are A and B. And we're going to color match the wire that the equipment's using. So that's going to be green and yellow. And if you go down here into this bit, it's the only two that are available for a low voltage connection without modifying what the uh, manufacturer intended. So I'm going to end up zip tying the thermostat wire, our low voltage wire, to the liquid line. And if you want to use a Romax connector, by all means do it. Um, code here does not require uh, this low voltage wiring to be in a Romax connector. So sometimes we do it, sometimes we don't, but nobody's going to be back here cutting grass or walking back here in all of this mess. So we don't have to worry about it getting yanked out of the unit or anything like that. Uh, sometimes we do it, sometimes we don't. And then on the inside unit to the thermostat, that uses four wires. Um, you know how whenever you take like on the air handler, like on the copper stuff, whenever you take the black stuff off the pipe, it'll like shoot out air or something. Yeah. This came out with it when I. Yeah, um, that'll go back in the small side. So just put it back in there? Well, just don't lose it. Okay. If, it'll, if you can put it back in there and it'll stay, you can... Well, you don't want to get pocket lint in it either. It's like a filter. It's a strainer. Okay. And I'm about done with this, so... Alright. Be in shortly. So, we are pretty much done with the outdoor unit. We're going to clean up. Uh, we've got to do line set flush. I'm going to finish up the, help him finish up the indoor unit and mount the thermostat. And after we do the line set flush and we get the new unit brazed in place, we'll start pulling a vacuum. And I'll pick back up with this uh, when we finish up that and show you what's going on. All right. All right. So we've got the air handler uh, installed. Uh, I've been pulling a vacuum since we sweat the coil in, and we've been going for I don't know, probably close to an hour and a half, two hours while we're finishing that up. So vacuum looks good. We're gonna go ahead and release the refrigerant and start this unit up. All right, so we're finishing up. This is the air handler, huge. We've got a five inch filter rack down here that we're sealing up. We still gotta insulate some pipe. There's some uh, copper pipe. And we had to take this air handler apart to get it in here. And it's as low as we can get it off the floor for airflow clearance. And that's it. So other than insulating pipes and checking the refrigerant charge and finishing up this taping and doing some cleaning up, stuff like that, we're all done. Um, I did have to pump the unit down and put the Schrader valves back in. I forgot about that. Um, and I'm about to do a video on how to properly check the refrigerant charge on these Evolution and Infinity style systems. See y'all next time.